Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Celtic Cable Bag. This bag is made out of 100% cotton. I use uh, a yarn by Lion Brand Yarns called Jeans and it's a DK or a number three weight yarn. Works really well for this pattern. And I wanted to show you that it, it, it also has some really unique cabling designs. Uh, it's using a special technique that I devised for some of my designs and I'm really excited to share this with you all. So if you are looking for the written pattern for this project, it originally appeared in the June 2020 edition of Crochet World Magazine. So if you are already a subscriber and have this magazine, then you're good to go on the pattern. If you would like to buy the pattern alone or the magazine or look for my Lovecraft store pattern, just look in the video description below and the links will be there available for you. Also, the yarn that you might need will also be there listed so that you can just check the links below. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. Oh, one more thing. If you're new to the channel, if you could please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you like the project and also the notification bell just so that you don't miss any of the new offerings that I have coming your way. For this project, I'm going to be using Lion Brand Collections Cotton Jeans, which is 100% cotton yarn. It is a number three or a DK weight yarn. Each of these scans has 218 yards or 200 meters, weighing 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. Uh, and you are going to need four of these. And this is the lot number or the color number. Um, actually, it's number 108 and it's called worn, as in worn jeans. Okay, you're also going to need a couple of crochet hooks. I'm recommending that you have size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook as well as a G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hooks. And I also recommend that you have a sharp pair of scissors and a yarn needle handy. There is the option for lining your bag with fabric. So if you um, plan on doing that, you're going to need the fabric for that and also the sewing thread and needle to match that fabric and perhaps a sewing machine. To begin, we're going to be using our smaller hook or the G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. We're going to start with a slip knot and our starting chain is going to be 58 chains. So go ahead and chain those. Now that we have our 58 chains, we're ready to begin row one. And we're going to start with a double crochet in the fourth chain. One, two, three, four. Double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook and then each chain across. And in this particular pattern, the turning chain or the chain three does count as a stitch and you should have a total of 56 stitches at the end of this row. After we finish row one, we're going to start row two with a chain two and starting in the second stitch, we are going to work a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. If you've never seen a post stitch, let me do a little bit more slowly. It's the same as completing a double crochet, except instead of going through the top loops, we are actually going to go around the body of the stitch like you're giving it a belt, pull up a loop, and then just complete the double crochet the way you normally would. For a back post double crochet, we come in the back door, come around the stitch, and we complete the stitch on the back side, hence the back post double crochet. So go ahead and work that alternating front post and back post all the way to the last two stitches and I will show you how to work the last two stitches of the row. The last two stitches, we're going to work a back post, double crochet, and then a half double crochet worked in that chain space. Now we're going to chain two and the next three rows, we're going to have rows three through five are simply going to be working the same front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, all the way across the row, and at the end, you work your half double crochet 
in the turning chain. So go ahead and work those five rows. After working those rows of ribbing, this is what you should have. That's one, two, three, four, five rows. Okay, now we're ready to begin row number six. And this is where we begin to establish our cabling pattern. We're going to chain two. Before I go any further, we did change. We need to change to the larger, the H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. We're going to skip the first stitch and in the next stitch, we're going to make what we call a waddle stitch, which is actually a combination of three stitches, single crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet worked in the same stitch. After working those three stitches or the waddle stitch, we skip the next two stitches and then we work another one in the next stitch. We're going to do this until we have five waddle stitches in a row. Single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Skip two stitches. We're going to do that again. Single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Skip two. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now I need to make one more. Skip two. Single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Let's pause and take a look at what we have. So we should have one, two, three, four, five waddle stitches. Now we're going to skip the next two, like we do after every waddle stitch. One, two. And then the next stitch is here. We're going to start working the next repeat, which is three front post double crochets. And then after that, we work a half double crochet worked in the top loops of the next stitch. It's really important that as you work this next section that we don't skip stitches and that we don't use the same stitch twice by working in the top and then also in the post. So we want to be careful not to do that. Okay, so that's one. We're going to repeat this four more times. The three front post double crochets and then a half double crochet worked in the top loops. I'm just going to go ahead and work this foundation row with you because it's kind of important that we get it right. It's everything else from this point is going to key off of this row. After those three front post doubles, we work a half half double crochet. So far we have one, two, three groups. Let's do two more. Three front post double crochets and then a half double crochet and then let's do it again. One, two, three front post double crochets and a half double crochet. So now we have one, two, three, four, five sets that have half double crochets in between. And then the last set, we are simply going to do three front post double crochets. One, two, and three. Now we're going to go back to working five waddle stitches starting in the very first stitch, the next stitch here. Work that single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Skip two, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two, and do this again. I have trouble with my hook today for some reason. I could just have days like that once in a while. Skip two, single crochet, chain one, 
Let's double double check here. So we have one, two, three, four. We have one more to do. Skip two. Single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Now at the end, um, you're going to skip the next two and then work in the last stitch. The pattern says not to work in the last stitch. I'm not sure why it says that. Um, sometimes we do get technical glitches here and there in publication, but um, you should work in that last stitch just the way I showed you here. Okay, so go ahead, chain two. And now we're going to work the next row, which is row number seven. And this is what we're gonna do with these waddle stitches. We're gonna be skipping the first stitch here and this double crochet. And when we're walking, working over waddle stitches, we're only gonna work in the chain one space. And of course we work another waddle stitch, which is that single crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we're gonna skip over this stitch and this stitch and go to the next chain one space. So rather than saying skip this and skip that, I'm just gonna say work in that next chain one space of the waddle stitch. And again, we're just working that waddle stitch. I hope you enjoy this stitch. I think it makes a lovely crochet fabric that is a little, you know, a bit interesting, a little different than your usual, just straight up double crochets or single crochets. And it also makes a very um, flexible, um, you know, very, very flexible fabric as well, which is kind of nice. So after we worked those five waddle stitches, now we come to these post stitches and we're gonna work three back post double crochets worked over those what used to be front post double crochets when we were facing the other side and then we work a half double in that top of the half double crochet working through both loops on top and we're going to repeat that four more times three back post double crochets and then a half double crochet. So repeat that until you get to the last set of back post stitches. When you get to the last grouping of those post stitches, we just work three back post double crochets, but we do not follow that with a half double. Okay, so I just wanted to show that to you. So we worked the three back post double crochets and that brings us to our five waddle stitches again. And then we simply work single crochet, chain one, double crochet, worked in those waddle stitches. So go ahead and work well, I'll go ahead and work these with you because they, they go pretty quickly. Once you your muscle memory gets used to doing these three stitches together, you almost don't have to think about it. And it, it does go pretty quickly. Okay, single crochet, chain, chain one, and double crochet. And after working those five waddle stitches, we're going to work a single crochet in that chain two space. Now let's turn and take a look at what you should have after working row number seven. Okay, let's go ahead and try row number eight, chain two, and go ahead, just like we did on the last row, we're gonna work waddle stitches in each of those chain one spaces. So go ahead and work those five waddle stitches. After working those first five waddle stitches, we're going to work front post double crochet over the next three stitches. Half double crochet in the next half double crochet. And then we're going to do that again. Three front post double crochets and 
and then a half double crochet in that half double crochet. Let me pause to show that you've done two groupings of these. Now we're going to do what is referred to in the pattern as an FCC or front cable cross. For us to do that, we're going to skip the next three stitches, half double crochet in the top loops of that next half double crochet. Work front post treble crochet, so wrap your hook twice. We're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. After working those three front post trebles and that half double, we're going to work in front of those four stitches and we're going to front post treble in these stitches and in this order, starting with the one that's kind of furthest away from us at this point. So it's one, two, and three. Now we're going to half double in the next half double, working through those top loops. Let's just pause and you can see what this looks like. We just crossed the center cable. And now for the next two sections, we're just going to work front post, double crochets, half double, that next half double, and then three more front post double crochets. One, two, three, and that brings us to our waddle stitches, and you should know what to do. Working only in the chain one space, work those waddle stitches, which again, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. I know it's redundant, but I'm just trying to help those who are new to this and um, just sometimes to learn something you have to hear it about 35 times, no joke. For me, I think learning names, maybe have to double that, but um, I am working at that. So go ahead and we'll finish this row with those five waddle stitches and then a single crochet in the chain two turning space. And this is what you should have. You can see where that first center cable has taken its first turn. All right, let's go ahead and turn. Now we're working on row number nine already, chain two. And again, single in that, in that chain one space, we're going to work those waddle stitches. So go ahead and work those five waddle stitches. Now we're going to work back post double crochet, so work three. We're basically going to be working back post double crochets over all of these posts for the cable section. So, and we're going to do them in groups of three, just like we've been doing three back post double crochets, half double crochet in that next half double, three more back post double crochets, And then half double crochet worked in the top. Now we come to the part where the cable was crossed. And this is the way you're going to work with the back side facing whenever you come to a crossed cable in the row immediately after you crossed it. So it's three back post double crochets. And now we're going to work a half double crochet in between the last stitch and the next stitch and it's going to be right where the cable was crossed and I'm putting my finger right there. That's where you put that half double right in between in the center of the cable and then three more back post double crochets. We're going to skip this half double and we're going to work a half double in this next one. And for those of you who are mathematicians and conscious of stitch count and so forth, 
we can skip this stitch because we've added this stitch in. So they kind of cancel out mathematically, therefore maintaining a constant stitch count. And your, your stitch count should stay constant um, throughout this project. Okay, so three more. Back post, double crochets. Half double. Make sure we get all the loops through. There we go. And three more back post double crochets. One, two, and three. And then we work five more waddle stitches. And I'm just going to work one of these because then you know how to work these by now. And then at the end, don't forget that you work a single crochet in the chain two space and then turn. That brings us to row 10, We're going to chain two, and go ahead and work those five waddle stitches to begin. Go ahead and work those, and then I'll show you the cabling section. After working those five waddle stitches, we are going to continue our cabling section. We do that with three front post double crochets. And then work a half double, working through the top loops of that half double crochet. And now here comes the interesting part. We're going to be working what the pattern refers to as a BCC or a back cable cross. We're going to skip the first three post stitches, half double that next stitch. We're going to front post treble crochet in the next three stitches. After working those last four stitches, we are going to work front post treble crochets, but behind, working behind these stitches. We do this by coming in the hole right back here, and then we wrap our hook around the stitch. It helps me let me show you to put my thumb up through the hole after I confirm with my uh, nerve endings in my fingers here which stitch that I'm going to be working on. So I know I'm going to be working on this stitch. And I can go ahead and this way, complete the stitch pretty easily and confidently. And then the next one is right beside it. Two. And the third one, which is right here. One, two, three. And let me go ahead and show you. We've done the back, the back cross, back cable cross. We're still, like I said, we're still working front post stitches here, but it's behind the last four stitches. I'm going to do another one for you in just a second half double crochet in that next half double crochet. Now we're going to do it again. Skip the next three stitches, half double in the next stitch, and we're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. This is a very visual pattern once you get used to it and you understand where you're headed. Now we're going to do another one of those back cable crosses, which comes back behind these last four stitches into this hole. We're going to work that first front post treble around that first stitch there. That's one. And the next one is right beside it. Two. And the next stitch, which is right here. And that's three. And let's go ahead and put the next half double crochet in that next half double crochet. And then three more front post double crochets. I know it's a little bit of a mix up. Whenever you cross the cables, you're going to be using treble crochet, but if you're not crossing the cables, you're going to use front post double crochet. So you can see how this is starting to form now. I hope that's making sense. So the way we're going to do this every other row, like we have a front cable cross and then 
two rows later we have back cable crosses and then in two more rows we're going to actually have three front cable crosses. So it's going to go front cable cross, back cable cross, front cable cross, back cable cross, just like that. So now all we have to do for row 10 is finish up those five waddle stitches, which I'll go ahead and do off camera. And don't forget again, at the very end of the row, make sure you work a single crochet in that chain two space. For row 11, we're working with the back side facing again. And if you haven't figured it out yet, except for the ribbing, every row is going to start and end with those five waddle stitches. So go ahead and work five more of those waddle stitches, again, working only in the chain one spaces. After those five waddle stitches, we are working back post double crochets over each of the post stitches that form the cables. Remember they're in groups of three and then half double in the next half double crochet. Now we've had two cables that were crossed from the last row. So we're going to work them very much like we did two rows earlier. Three back post double crochets. And in between the last stitch and the next stitch, which is where this cable let me show you where the cable was crossed. We always work a half double crochet in between there. And then three more back post double crochets. Let me try that one again because it looked like I lost some of the strands there. You do have to be careful with cotton like this because it's easy to not get all the strands and that can be a problem. Okay, so now we're going to half double in the next half double crochet right there. And we've got another set of crossed cables, so we have to do that again. Three back post double crochets. I hope you're getting the the idea behind this now, because once you've done this a couple times um, in the groups of three and separated by the half double crochets, I think it's a it's not a difficult concept at all. Okay, then the half double, which is in be in that space in between the last stitch and the next stitch, center of the cable, and then three more back post double crochets. And half double in this next half double crochet. And then we have three more back post double crochets. These are the standalone grouping for now. That's going to change on this next, next row. Okay, and then we have the five more waddle stitches. So go ahead and work those five waddle stitches ending with a single crochet worked in that chain two space. This is what you should have after working those first 11 rows. Now the next row, let me go ahead and give you a preview of what we're going to do. We're actually going to work three front, front cable crosses. These two cables are going to cross. The, these two cables, this one coming up from behind and this are going to cross. And these two cables are also going to be crossed. So I just wanted to give you a little, a little preview of where we're headed here. So this again is row 12, chain two, and we're gonna work those waddle stitches in those chain one spaces. So go ahead and work those five waddle stitches. Now we're ready to work our three front cable crosses and we work them all the same way. Skip three stitches, half double in that half double crochet, front post treble in the next three post stitches, one, two, and three, working in front of the last four stitches, we work front post treble in those three stitches that we skipped. One, two, 
two, three. And then we're going to work a half double in the next half double. And we're going to do that again. Skip the next three stitches, half double in the half double, front post treble in the next three stitches, one, two, three, working in front of the last four stitches. We're going to front post treble in the three trebles, or the three post stitches rather, that we skipped. One, two, and three. And then half double in the next half double, which is right there, working through the top loops. Okay, so we've done two crosses. Got to do one more. Skip the next three stitches, half double, and that next half double. Front post treble in the next three stitches. And working in front of the last four stitches that we just finished, front post treble in those three stitches that we skipped. One, two, and three. Let's just pause a minute. And this will settle out as we work the following rows. You can kind of see the cabling happening. Now we work those five wattle stitches worked in those chain one spaces. So go ahead and work those. And as I've said before, single crochet in that chain two space at the end of the row. This is what your piece should look like after 12 rows. Now we're ready to go to row 13. We're going to turn and just like the last several rows, go ahead and chain two and work waddle stitches in those first five chain one spaces. After those five waddle stitches, you're going to work back post double crochets over the next three stitches. And what I'm going to show you here, you're going to do three times because you had three cable crossings the last row. So we do three back post double crochets and in between the last stitch and the next stitch, which is the center of the cable, work that half double crochet. And then three more back post double crochets. And we're going to skip the next half double crochet, half double in the next half double crochet. So go ahead and do that. The only difference is the last, the last time you work those three back post double crochets over that last cable, um, then we're going to go right into the five waddle stitches and I'll show that to you. After working that last set of three back post double crochets, we skip this half double and we just go into working those five waddle stitches in those last um, chain one spaces. And then don't forget at the end, work a single crochet in the chain two turning chain. Now for row 14, it's going to be a repeat of row 10. I will work this with you, but I've gone ahead and done the chain two and the five waddle stitches worked in those chain one spaces. Now just to give you a preview, this is where we do the two back crosses in the cabling very, very much like this. This is what we're going to be doing again. So we're going to front post double crochet in those first three post stitches. Half double crochet in that next half double crochet. 
Now this is where we do the back cross. We're going to skip the next three post stitches, half double crochet into half double crochet, front post, treble crochet, and the next three stitches. Working behind the last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in those three stitches right here that we skipped. So this will be the first, and number two, and number three. Got away from me there, okay. And then after we do that, we half double crochet in the next half double crochet. And then we do another back cross, skip the next three stitches, half double, that next half double, front post, treble crochet in the next three stitches. Working behind the last four stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in those three stitches that we skipped, starting with the first, and then the next one. the third, and then follow that with a half double, that next half double crochet, and then three front post double crochets, one, two, and three. And then all that remains is working five of those waddle stitches in the chain one spaces. And then at the end of this row, work the single crochet in the chain two space. So go ahead and finish that row. And I will show you starting with the cabling of row number 15. Now we come to row 15, which is a repeat of row number 11. I've gone ahead and worked the chain two and those five waddle stitches in the chain one spaces. And so now we work back post double crochets over the next three post stitches, half double crochet in the next half double, and then we come to the crossed stitches. We just work three back post double crochets over those next three, one, two, and three, and then half double in between the last stitch and the next stitch, which again is the center of this cable where it was crossed, and then three more back post double crochets. And then half double in the next half double crochet. We are skipping another half double in here somewhere, but it's really hard to see, so that's why I'm not calling your attention to it. Then we're going to do that again. Three back post double crochets. Half double in between the last stitch and the next stitch. Again, the center of the cable where that was crossed and then three more back post double crochets. And then half double in that next half double. And then three more back post double crochets. Don't forget those last three. One, two, three. 
back post, double crochets. So all that's left now is to work those five waddle stitches and that single crochet at the end in the turning chain. So go ahead and work that and work the next chain two and five more waddle sp um, stitches going the other direction for the next row and then I will show you the cabling section. Now that brings us to row number 16, which is a repeat of row eight. And let me show you where row eight, row eight was where we crossed the first cables right down here. So I've gone ahead and worked the chain two, the five waddle stitches. And so what we're gonna do is front post, double crochet in the next three stitches. By now, hopefully you're starting to see the pattern and understanding that this isn't so bad after all. Half double in that next stitch. Now we're gonna do that again. Three, let's get the right strands there. Three, front post, double crochets. Half double in the next half double crochet. Okay, so so far we've done two sets of the front post double crochets. Now we're going to cross the center. Skip the next three post stitches, half double crochet, and the half double crochet. Now we're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and this is a front cable cross, so we're going to now work three front post stitches in the three post stitches that we skipped. One, two, and three. Half double in the next half double crochet. And then again, three front post double crochets. half double, get more yarn, and three more front post double crochets, one, two, three, and let's stop, take a look at what we have now. So now our diamond is, is completed, so now we just have to go go up a ways, and so the next few rows, let me just give you a heads up, are gonna be doing front post and back post um, double crochets mostly, and very little cabling. So I'll, I will work those with you until we get to the place where we begin the repeat again down here. But let's go ahead and finish up these five waddle stitches worked in those chain one spaces, and again, single crochet in the chain two space at the end of the row. And then go ahead and chain two and work five more waddle stitches going the other direction. And I will show you the cabling or the lack thereof of the cabling in the next few rows. For row 17, we are going to be repeating row number nine. And that's going to be basically back post double crochet in the next three stitches, followed by a half double crochet three more back posts, double crochets, half double crochet, and then when you get to the center, we're gonna work three back posts, double crochets, half double crochet in this space in between, and then three more back posts, double crochets, half double, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, and then work those five waddle stitches in those chain one spaces followed by the single crochet in the chain two space at the end. So go ahead and work that across. For row 18, I've gone ahead and worked the chain two and the five waddle stitches. And I am just going to simply explain what to do for this row because it's quite simple. Three front post doubles and half double crochet in the half double. We're gonna repeat that across. Three front post doubles, half double, three front post doubles, half double, three front post, half double, three front post double crochets, half double, three front post double crochets, and then work those five waddle stitches in the remaining 
chain one spaces and a single crochet at the end of the row. So go ahead and work that row across. This is the way the cabling should look after finishing 18 rows. Now I've gone ahead onto row 19 where you turn and I've worked the chain two and those five waddle stitches. And I'm actually going to talk you through this row as well because of its simplicity. I'll show you the, from the back side. We are simply going to work three, I'll turn it this way, three back post double crochets, half double, three back post doubles, half double, back post doubles, half double, back post doubles, etc. Half double, back post doubles, half double crochet, three back post double crochets, followed by the five waddle stitches. There you go, five waddle stitches and the chain two in the chain two turning space. So go ahead and work row number 19. This is what you should have after completing row number 19. Now for row number 20, it's simply a repeat of row 18 and I'm going to explain that one again. I've gone ahead and work my chain two in those five waddle stitches in those chain one spaces over here up to the right. And then this is going to be another row where you work three front post double crochet, half double front post, half double front post, half double front post, half double front post, half double, and then three front post double crochets, followed by the five waddle stitches and the single crochet in the chain two turning chain. So go ahead and work row number 20. After completing row 20, your cable section should look like this. Now we're going to work row 21 and I'm going to talk you through this one again because it is a repeat of row number 7. Again, chain 2, waddle stitches in those 5 chain 1 spaces and then again we're going to work 3 back post double crochets, half double back post, half double back post half double back post, half double three back post, half double three back post double crochets, and then work the five waddle stitches in those chain one spaces and a single crochet in the chain two turning chain. So go ahead and finish row 21 and then I have a larger assignment to help you on your way for the rest of this project. This is what you should have at the end of row 21. Okay, we have worked through all the rows that we're going to be repeating. So now for rows 22 through 89, we're going to be repeating rows 8, which starts right here with the first cable cross, and we're ready to do another one right up here, and this will complete this center cable when we do. We're going to repeat rows 8, which is the row down here, through 21, four times more, and then we're going to be repeating rows 8 through 19, which is about to this point on the cabling, one more time. Once you do that, the piece should measure approximately 32 inches long. Now, if it's not exactly 32 inches, I wouldn't worry about it because this is a bag. It's not a garment. It's not going to be a deal breaker, although you can try blocking to the dimensions that you would like. Okay, so go ahead and work through rows 80, 22 through rows 89. At the end of row 89, let me show you what you should have. This is where we started. So you're going to have, as far as the big full sections here with the, with the central cable like this, you should have one, two, three, four, five repeats. And then again, repeating this section all the way, ending on a repeat of row 19. Now, now before we begin working the ribbing section, we do need to make sure that we change back to our smaller crochet hook, which is the G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter hook. We're going to chain 2 and we're going to work 2 double crochets in that first chain one space. Notice that I did skip the first single crochet in that double crochet. And then we're going to work a double crochet in that next single crochet. So we skip the double crochet again. And we're going to do this in each waddle stitch. 
two double crochets in that chain one space and then one double crochet in that single crochet. I'll do this for you one more time and just go ahead two double crochets in the chain one space and a double crochet in that single crochet. Go ahead and finish those waddle stitches and I'll show you what to do when you get to the post stitches and the cabling section. Now that we get to the front post cabling section, we're going to go ahead and work three front post stitches, one over each of those next post stitches of the cable, and then one double crochet in the top of that half double crochet. Whoops, let's go ahead and do that again. I was working a half double. Make sure that's a double crochet in that half double. So again, front post double crochets over the post stitches, and then a double crochet in the half double. So go ahead and work that all the way across the cabling section. After working across that cabling section, it should look like this. And now we get to the waddle stitches again. We skip the first double crochet, work two double crochets in that chain one space, and then one in that single crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across and I'll show you what to do on the last stitch. After working this all the way across, go ahead and work a double crochet in that chain two space at the end as well. And this is what you should have after the end of that first row of the end ribbing. So now we're going to turn and we're going to chain two, one, two, and starting in the second stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And that's going to be our repeat all the way across this row. Front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post and then back post double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. As we complete working this row, we end with a front post double crochet and then a half double crochet worked in that chain two space. So for row three, we're going to turn and well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we should have. So you should have worked this ribbing alternating front post and back post all the way across the row, even across the half double crochets and the cabling section. Okay, now we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to start with a back post double crochet. It's very important that you work back post over the back post and front post over the front post to maintain the ribbing. So row three, we're going to work a back post double crochet and then a front post double crochet, back post, and then a front post double crochet. So go ahead and work that alternating all the way across the row. At the end of this row, it ends with a back post double crochet and then a half double crochet in that turning chain. Now for the next two rows, rows four and five, we're just simply going to repeat rows two and three, just like I showed you. And row four, again, we'll start with a front post double crochet and row five, we'll start with a back post double crochet. So go ahead and finish those two more rows of the ribbing. This is what you should have after finishing row number five of the ribbing. Now we need to go back and change our hook once again back to the larger or the H or eight or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And what we're going to do now is we are going to work a perimeter round all the way around this square or, or rectangle. Just keep the front side facing and we're going to turn 90 degrees, chain one, and we're going to work one single crochet in each row ending. Okay, I'll just work a few of these um, with you as we work over the ribbing. And now the other row ends. You're going to have one 
in the chain two space and then one over a single crochet all the way down each side. So go ahead and work that all the way down until you get to the next corner. Okay, now that we have worked all the way across the edge, we are going to turn 90 degrees, chain two. Now we are going to do something slightly different across these edges with the um, ribbing. Instead of working single crochets, we're actually going to work slip stitch. So we're going to do slip stitch across that foundation chain. Okay, and if you're not sure where to put your needle or your hook, find where that double crochet was and just put it in the same hole where that double crochet was put and just slip stitch just like this. It makes a really nice um, decorative edge along both edges here because one will be the flap that will be showing and one will be, you know, of course, on the inside of the bag. But go ahead and work the slip stitches all the way across to the corner. So after working those slip stitch slip stitches all the way across, now we're going to do another corner. We're going to turn, chain two, and we're just going to work one single crochet in each row end, just like we did along the other side. Do that all the way across. And when you get to the end, or to the corner rather, right down here, we're going to do another chain two turn and we're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, working under both loops, just like we did um, for the foundation round. And I will show you the join once we finish that. At the end of this round, we're going to chain two, one, two, after that last slip stitch and join with a slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round. Go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and make sure that you clip a generous strand so that it will be easier to hide with our needle. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me show you how to hide these loose strands because there are going to be several of them for you to hide. First thing we're going to need to do is thread our yarn needle very carefully. Make sure you get all the threads because this has multiple strands. And just kind of go into, usually I like to do this with the back side facing, so make sure that, that you do that on the back side. And go down there, and I'm just going to run it underneath these single crochets, and that should be fine. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to actually bring it down. I'm actually going to turn a corner here. I'm going to go underneath these stitches and run it under a couple more. Just to be sure. Alright, let's go ahead and give that. I'll go ahead and trim. You want to trim close to the stitches, but not too close. And give it a little to pull back there. And that's what you're going to need to do to hide all those loose strands. So go ahead and do that. And then I will show you how to connect the sides. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about how to finish. Now in just a minute, I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to show you how to do the seams on both sides that will form the bag. But before I do, I just wanted to draw your attention to the pattern, which talks about finishing um, using a rectangular piece of fabric on the inside, and it's probably easier to do this now rather than later. And as you do that, um, make sure that you leave about a quarter of an inch on the side and don't put the fabric over the single crochets because that's where we're going to be single crocheting this closed in just a minute, or actually with a knurl stitch. Um, but when you do make the lining, should you do this, this is totally optional, Consider putting some pockets on the inside to help store your things so that you can, um, you know, make it very functional. Well, anyway, and I also recommend that you do a lining for the strap that we're going to do in just a minute. But um, I just wanted to put a word in for that. So go ahead and grab your hook. And actually, we're going to need a measuring tool. 
And what you need to do is measure out approximately 13 inches. Okay, and you can you can do this from either end of the project. Now, if you want your bag to be 12 inches instead of 13 inches, that is fine too. So measure out approximately okay, thir 13 inches. I'll show you that. And what we're going to do is, is once we do that, we are going to carefully line up our stitches to be crocheted together. Okay, stitch by stitch. I highly recommend you do this so that it so that it works out evenly. I'm going to go ahead and and do this in just a second. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pin the chain two corner. right to the stitch here. And then I'm going to carefully line up the stitches. And I'm going to actually measure this again just to make sure that it is the distance that I would like it to be. And that is, as you can see, approximately 13 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hook to get ready to, to crochet this together. Now I'm going to be starting this is the bag. The opening is up here. And I'm starting in the bottom left corner because the neural stitch that we're going to use is worked from left to right for right-handed people and right to left for left-handed. So it's the opposite of the direction that you're normally crocheting. It is also called a reverse single crochet. So I'm going to put my hook through those two loops of both both sides. So I'm actually going under four loops there to start. Go ahead and get our slip knot ready. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to give it a chain and I'm going to go ahead and, and use that stitch again for the first neural stitch. And this is going to be a little bit slow going as we line these up. So line up the next two stitches, just like so, the next two. Now if this looks um, difficult. It really isn't. It's actually more of a mind over matter with this stitch, but I really love the way the texture is and the way it connects things. Now, if this becomes impossible for you to do, I have another solution. And that is just start at the top at this end and just do slip stitch through all, all four loops. And that would also work. But I, I really do like this texture. So I'm going to go ahead and and work this neural stitch. Now as I'm working it, I will say I'm not thinking much about where the strands are falling. I think that's where a lot of seasoned crocheters get into trouble as they try to control where the strands fall a little too much. If you just go through the motion, put the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two and don't think about it much more than that. Um, I believe it is very doable. Um, I'm a very seasoned crocheter, you can say, after 50 years, and I still do this stitch rather on the slow side, um, just to be very careful with it. And just also make sure you keep your tension the way you normally would, and, and this will kind of keep these stitches looking even. So go ahead and continue that all the way to the top right here. I'm working the last stitch through the chain two and I'm making that a reverse slip stitch. Give it a tug, give it a chain and a pull and I am now ready to fasten off with this side. Go ahead and pull that up. So now this side of the bag is completed. So now all we need to do we need to make sure that the other side of the bag is lined up with the same row from the left side. And once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and line that up carefully. And then I will start you on the other side. And we're going to actually start 
from the top of this and go down so that the neural will be on the front side of this side. Now that I have found where this is lined up carefully, I'm going to go ahead and put my hook in that chain two space and in that single crochet along the edge. Take out my stitch marker and do the same thing that I did on the left side. But I am now working on the right side of the bag. There we go with our slip knot. And I'm going to do a chain. And now starting in that same place, I'm going to work the neural stitch through. Let me make sure I get it in the right stitch. Okay, here and here. And through both stitches, the two loops there and the two loops on the other side. And so go ahead and work that all the way down to the end, just the way I showed you for the left side. And then fasten off once you get the last stitch made. And remember the last stitch through the last two loops, or the last four loops rather, uh, of these two sides is going to be a reverse slip stitch. Just to eliminate any confusion, I'm going to go ahead and work the last stitch, which is through those last two stitches there, which is a reverse slip stitch. Just go ahead and pull that through. Okay, give it a nice, nice strand so that we can hide that loose thread with our yarn needle. And this is the way our bag looks now. And then we can bring our flap closed. Okay, just like that. Um, I'm going to just put the lining in at another time, but um, this is getting close. Now all we need to do is make the strap, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. For the strap, we're using our larger hook, which is the HR8 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. And go ahead and use that slip stitch. And the first thing we're going to do is this chain 12 chains. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. For row one of the strap, we're just going to single crochet starting in the second chain from hook and then each chain across. This will give you 11 single crochets at the end of this row. So after we finish row one, we're going to turn and we're going to chain two. And we are going to work a waddle stitch in the next stitch. So we skip the first stitch, waddle stitch in the next stitch, chain one, double crochet again for that waddle stitch, skip two stitches. We're going to do this two more times, single crochet, chain one, double crochet for that waddle stitch. Skip two, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. After the third waddle stitch, we skip two stitches and work a single crochet in that last stitch. Now we're going to do row three by chaining two. We're going to turn. Now what we do now is very similar to what you've seen in the other part of the pattern, but we're going to do this until you reach the length that you prefer for your strap. So we're going to single crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're working the waddle stitches only in the chain one spaces of the waddle stitches from the previous row. Okay, just like so. And then a single crochet in that chain two space. So go ahead and work row three until the strap is the length that you prefer. The example shown has a strap that is 37 inches. So if you're looking for one that's similar to mine, then you would want to do this until the fabric when laying flat, not being stretched, but when laying flat is 37 inches. So now we're going to work a perimeter round. Obviously this is not a full size uh, strap. 
but I just wanted to use this to demonstrate what you're going to do once you have your long strap. Um, and you're going to work a finishing edge that looks like this. We're going to chain one. And also notice that this is a completely reversible fabric, so you don't have to worry about which side you end on. So working only in the chain one space, we're going to work two single crochets, and then work a single crochet in that single crochet right next to it. Skip the double crochet, two single crochets in the chain one space, and then one in the single crochet. And do that one more time. Two single crochets in the chain one space, and then one in the single crochet space. Now I've noticed that I'm not working in the turning chain at this point. Chain two, and we've turned 90 degrees to work along the edge. And of course your row ends are going to be much longer than what I'm showing you here. Single crochet in the same place as the last single crochet. This will give you a nice squared up corner. And then one single crochet in each row end just the way we did alongside the bag. The bag edges. Okay, so you go ahead and do this and you'll have about you know 37 inches more or less as you go down this side single crochet in that last stitch, chain two, and then single crochet in that same place again. And then single crochet along the foundation chain. Also notice I'm working over the loose strand. You don't have to do it that way, but sometimes it is helpful to work over some of these strands so you don't have to go and hide them later. Okay, once we get to the last stitch, let's see. We have one more here, I believe. Chain two and single crochet again in the same place to make that squared up corner. And then single crochet one single crochet for every row end going down the other side. And again, when you are working down these row ends, this is going to take you much longer than what I'm showing you here because this will be far longer than the little two and a half inches that I'm showing you here. Okay, after working in that last row end, chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and give it a chain and a tug. We want to fasten off. And the last thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to sew. You can either sew using the yarn needle and the yarn, or you could choose to use the thread that you used to connect your lining should you, you know, have, have you decide if you had decided to do that. So what I would recommend doing is carefully lining up looking at the inside. You can put this anywhere. You can put it down below the ribbing or you can even attach it to the ribbing however you choose. And then carefully sew this to the inside of the bag. Now again, it's very highly recommended that you use some kind of fabric. And if you do, connect the fabric on the inside of this single crochet, if you know, at the border that we just did, and that would actually make a nice, um, just a nice accent. Plus it will give the strap a lot of strength and keep it from overstretching. If you just leave the strap the way it is, it honestly is not going to be a very good strap. It's going to be too stretchy. So you, I highly recommend you line this with fabric. Another option is you could actually purchase some of the leather straps or vinyl straps that connect in with little rings or with hooks and are easily removable. And it would be very easy to just connect them either on the outside of the bag or gently on the inside. Just make sure that when you connect those temporary style um, handles that you connect them to enough fabric so it won't um, hurt the stitches. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the Celtic cable bag with me today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and if you could hit that notification bell and definitely the subscribe button if you haven't already, that would be great. 
God bless. Bye-bye.